Hey everybody, this is Tim Mittner uh, with Two Pine Software. I'm here today with a couple of other two partners, uh, Mike Terrell and Keith Garner. And we're going to talk about an issue that uh, our customers are bringing up more and more often. And that is, how do you deal with uh, 802.1x authentication on your network and deal with Pixie? And those seem to be polar opposites from one another, as 802.1x is all about securing the network and Pixie is not very secure. Um, so why don't we jump right in? Um, Keith, could you just give me a, a high level overview of like 802.1x and what it is, what it's for? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, 802.1x is uh, you know absolutely an industry standard when it comes to uh, network security. So we've, we've all kind of dealt with uh, network security on Wi-Fi devices. Uh, how do we make sure that your communications over Wi-Fi are secure? But you know, certainly 802.1x is, is also really the de facto way to handle that on you know wired devices as well. Um, in fact, they could be integrated into switches and uh, your entire networking infrastructure. So you're, you're, you connect up to a device, uh, it, it uh, connects up to a switch. The switch then uh, will authenticate. And there are different ways we can authenticate. Uh, you can authenticate with uh, uh, simple credentials, or perhaps you can put a certificate on your box. Uh, that, that requires that you have to be set up beforehand and whatnot. But once that's done, you, you could have this secure encrypted uh, uh, tr uh, transmission for your device, and, be, and all other devices will not be allowed on the network. I mean, they'll be blocked. You won't, won't be able to ping. You won't be able to reach other devices on the network that are that aren't connected which is good if you're if you're in a highly secure environment like a, 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 a financial or medical or other uh, other environments yeah this is very important uh, but there are gosh there are some kind of challenges when setting that up I don't know Mike uh... yeah so some of the challenges are activating requires the ability to get on the network prior to the OS loading so that's kind of like a chicken and the egg thing um the 802.1x requires that authentication as you mentioned keith um typically we see certificates um but not always and then they are unique usually ones that are specific to the to the device so uh, i've seen some customers actually use an embedded certificate in in a windows pe image that they stick on a usb key uh not necessarily the most secure because that USB key gets out and then anybody can get access to your network from it. So security teams really don't like that approach. Um, but yeah, when you're booting, the authentication is is not going to be available through a low level post or pixie boot environment. So this is where uh, two of our products uh, to Pixie and the iPixie web service work together to provide a great solution for this. Yeah, certainly the, that's one of the challenges. Uh, uh, um, WinPE pre-installation environments are, are that chicken and the egg challenge. Uh, thankfully, um, um, 802.1x does have a couple of built-in solutions to do that. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Mike, you could pre-install the certificate on um uh, a device you could do uh credentials in order to get on um uh, but 802.1x does have uh, concepts of uh, you know uh, understanding unauthenticated devices and it also has uh tools like uh, uh mac access bypass mab requests that we can do to uh, kind of work around this but there are some challenges around that So let's just take a look at the quick process here on how this is actually going to work. Um, so we've got a typical network here where we've got uh, some devices that are in kind of an, an unauthorized or restricted VLAN state. So these devices can be contacted by any device that hits the network. Uh, obviously, DHCP being one of them, um, you need to be able to get an IP address in order to get on the network. So that's that's got to come come first. So what's going to happen when a device boots up is the 802.1x authentication actually starts. And that's a, a 
good practice if you're a company with 802.1x. Uh, you don't want unauthorized devices uh, getting into your authorized network. Uh, put them on a, a, a isolated VLAN and uh, where they could be remediated. Maybe they are. You have some tools that can detect it whether or not uh, they're fully patched or uh, uh, have other vulnerabilities. Yeah, put them on the unauthorized VLAN and. And make sure they're remediated. So and now we can go in and, and actually just fixing and actually uh, uh, test some devices. But that's good architecture design. Yeah. Once it's allowed on the network, then obviously it can get a, an IP address. So that way it can actually start to talk and use um, the, the limited uh, network services. We also place our 2PIXI and our iPIXI web service server in that restricted VLAN um, so that it can talk to the clients and the clients can talk to it. Now, this is important because uh, uh, as the device reaches out, right, it uh, has to reach out for for, I, for uh, PIXI booting, has to reach out to DHCP to get an address, and also has to reach out to um, uh, download a boot key, you know, the, the authorized state. So our uh, the iPIXI servers need to be on that uh, uh, um, uh, unrestricted, un unauthorized state VLAN in order to even start communicating. Now, the way that we control the access is then the iPIXI will prompt for, it could be a username and password, it could be uh, uh, authentication code, anything like that to make sure that the person that's on the other end of that device is actually a person that, that is enabled to actually pixie boot a, a particular machine on, on the network. In this case, we could use standard iPixie web service um, uh, uh, tools to kind of initiate that. Now, that's also a great time to ask for username and password. The uh, iPixie client front end supports that, and uh, we could do our authentication that way. So we don't have to expose Active Directory or some of your other environments to you know that unauthorized state. Let the uh, iPixie server be that gateway. Next, what happens after a successful authentication is the iPixie web service is going to reach out and request what's called a MAC address bypass for that device. So this, this is what will allow it to communicate with other services outside of the restricted VLAN. Right, and this is a, a standard uh, iPixie web service. Uh, as you know, many people know, we can run PowerShell scripts in the background. So if you do have uh, the ability to uh, issue MAV, MAV exceptions, maybe that's just a, a, um, a you know, REST API or some sort of API call we could do over the network. Yeah, we can request uh, the MAV, uh, MAV exception from the service uh, using uh, iPixie web service PowerShell code, which is uh, a, a standard in, uh, request there and, and get that uh, get that process started. Authorization is granted for that actual device. And then next, the WinP boot image that's uh, associated with the task that's selected through the boot menu can actually come down to the device, um, either from the server or from peers if it is branch cache enabled. So there are two ways that we're definitely doing this. One is that um, the, when the device starts out, it can only, uh, it'll be in the unauthorized state and will only have access to machines in an unauthorized restricted VLAN. Depending on what your architecture is, do you want to put CM into that group? Do you want to put Active Directory? You could choose not to. And then uh, from that, we can uh, grant the MAB, act, MAB exception that can be controlled via uh, um, re, uh, uh, credentials to make sure that only authorized people are allowed on. But then that uh, the the device is again access to everything else. oh you got a little unlock icon there on the screen now the uh the um uh, we have full access to the entire network but those two kind of uh, uh scenarios does it work f perfectly for every environment to do it one way or the other no it all kind of depends on the environment and uh we can kind of adjust that as necessary that's awesome this looks really slick so what are the kind of the technologies or the the, the tools or the products that you kind of use to, to piece this together? Well, well, of course, we're using an existing configuration manager, Active Directory, DHCP, and O2NX environment, kind of adding in the IPixie part of this. 
But you know, one of the challenges we had, uh, uh, you know, deciding uh, how to grant these uh, uh, MAB, um, you know, access a, a bypass, which we chose for this particular one particular customer. Uh, and one of the things we, we that made that kind of possible was running the PowerShell scripts on the uh, iPixie web service. Uh, that was actually one of the cool things that uh, the, um, the two point iPixie web service does is the ability to run those PowerShell scripts in the background and uh, feed the output to the menu, uh, do some other kind of authorization. So um, in fact, I don't think we could have done that with uh, just standard, um, with just the, the client side iPixie access. We have to uh, do these sort of uh, uh, authorizations and, and, and actions from the iPixie web service. That was kind of a cool value add that we got out of uh, the two-point software. Cool. Well, this looks really slick. Um, well, thank you guys very much for your time today. Um, uh, uh, where can folks go to, to find out more information? Yeah, uh, hopefully we'll pu publish a lot of uh, white papers on this uh, soon on the Two Point site. Um, uh, really excited about that. Uh, uh, we're going to be start blogging some uh, uh, information about this. There may be some questions, as I mentioned earlier, about kind of the customization. So please, if you if you do have any questions, or uh, uh, please contact uh, contact us. We'd be happy to kind of walk through you know your environment, what, what works best. Um, that's one of the advantages of the the two pixie solutions that we we are customizable uh, for each machine for each environment. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Yeah, and you can always uh, go to our website um, twopointsoftware.com. We have detailed information about. Uh, to Pixie and uh, the iPixie web service. So thank you all very much for watching today and let us know if you have any questions.